Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Plus Ultra Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Max Hall. I'm joined to you t- here today by Mini Deadpool. Okay, it's really just me here today, but I'm going to be doing a Q&A episode here today. If you're a first-time listener, welcome to the podcast. The Plus Ultra Fitness Podcast is a podcast where we talk a little bit about anime, a little bit about fitness, and a lot about nerd culture and how it can relate to helping us get motivated, amped up, and ready to become the best versions of ourselves and go plus ultra in our daily life. I'm a huge My Hero Academia fan, and I really attach myself to those images of going plus ultra and becoming your best self. If you are a return listener, thank you for coming again. You know what we're all about here. I always appreciate your guys' listens. Um, thank you for always coming back and giving the podcast a listen. I appreciate you guys so much. If you guys are not already part of the discord, please, please, please jump into the discord. I will leave a link below the discord is where I post when all the new episodes come out, um, where I ask for questions. I mean, I ask on Instagram and stuff like that too, but, uh, you know, the, the discord gets asked for questions, the discord, gets asked for feedback on upcoming episodes. The Discord gets spoilers on guests who are potentially coming up from time to time. So if you want the what's happening with the podcast, jump into the Discord, as well as it's just a really amazing community full of really amazing individuals. If you're struggling with your own health and fitness and you need that support system around you, then the Discord is the place to go. It's just this amazing group of amazing people that just want to help and support each other. And I think that's a key element to anybody's fitness journey is having this amazing support system around you of people hyping you up, um, of people catching you when you fall and, you know, people to run things by. Like maybe you are having questions about something or you heard something from somebody. You're like, is this true? Is, Is this what's up? Um, then you can jump into the discord. You can ask me, or if I'm not available, there's so many people that jump in and just have fantastic answers to things. Sometimes I agree with people. Sometimes I disagree with people, but at the end of the day, um, there's just this large group of people that are there to help support each other and are there to make each other better. Sometimes that means challenging each other. Sometimes that means we all agree, and that's just how it is. So without further ado, let's jump into the questions here. So um, so I'm uh, going through my list here. Sorry, give me a second. So the first question I have is from my buddy, Jermaine. Um, Jermaine's actually been working with me a little bit uh, with training recently. He's done a month. Um, As of today, when this episode drops, we're going to be comparing some before and after pictures. We're going to be, you know, uh, he's going to write me a nice little testimonial of how his results have gone. But uh, yeah, it's been really awesome to see Jermaine's um, progress in this first month of working with me. He's a super hardworking, talented individual. We talk like daily. We always have really fun conversations. I've really appreciated working with him. And on top of that, um, he's just a fun guy and he keeps me hyped up every day. And it's been awesome to see him work and go to work and make such amazing progress. So uh, I know you're listening, bud, because I know you listen to like every single episode. I know this is how you get through your mornings at work before uh, the store opens. So I just want to say, A, thank you for listening. B, thank you for being so amazing and getting such awesome results and working so hard. And for everybody else listening, go check out Jermaine and see kind of what results he's gotten. So his question is, is what is it like being 
uh, real life All Might, inspiring and helping those around you? So uh, that's a good question. And it's kind of a fun one because I get that like, level of like you're all might and you're you know you're helping support people around you lifting people up like all might does you're kind of in that mentor role and as a trainer i'm very much in that mentor role i mean at the end of the day i'm max i'm not all might i'm not anybody else i'm just me but uh i think that if when i think about myself i think about myself as deku i think about myself as that nerdy kid who has the squiggly lines coming out of his head as he's thinking and analyzing things and having all these like deep thoughts and trying to find the best way to go through solutions. And I see myself as always growing and always growing. Um, So maybe that's why I think of myself more as Deku, but I guess with like the all might side of things, I do really like helping people. I do really like inspiring people. I do really like helping people go plus ultra and, you know, be the best versions of themselves. That's why I became a trainer. That's why I love working with people. And to me, that's just the coolest feeling in the world is getting to, you know, see somebody, whether it's somebody that I'm working with or not, but getting to see somebody draw motivation, whether it be from this podcast or whether it be from my media or knowing me in real life and feeling inspired to become better versions of of themselves. Because, you know, that's what I try to do day to day is I just try to become a better version of myself and just be the best version of myself. So um, yeah, it's really cool when I can see people be inspired to do the same thing. Another question um, from Jermaine here is he says, uh, ooh, I have another question for you. Uh, for the Q&A, if uh, you can ask more than one, if steroids were legal, do you think there would be an increase in people using them or a decrease in people using them? Uh, He says, I think you'd see an increase in sports, but potentially a decrease outside of sports. So steroids is kind of an interesting thing. I've never really got into steroids myself. Um, I find I guess like some of the science behind it and some of the psychology behind it really, really fascinating. I will say if it was legal, I would assume that it would be regulated. And if it was regulated, I think one of two things would happen is people would acquire it and just sell it illegally anyways, to the people that don't want to go through the regulations Um, or more people would do it smarter like if there was people specifically that that was their job, kind of like cannabis, like, you know, like cannabis used to be one of those things where it's like, oh, like you never know what you're going to get. Like it might be laced with something, but now it's like, oh, well, if you go to like a reputable store that, you know, <laughs> you would hope that it's not laced with any shit that's going to like fuck you up really bad. Um, <laughs> again, not something I'm super into uh, cannabis, but it seems like it, there's safer routes to get it. So I feel like, Maybe if uh, they made it legal and sold it through regulated routes, something like cannabis, um, we'd maybe see more people that are uneducated about it, getting educated about it before starting it and less like bad outcomes having like, yeah, just watch more plates, more dates on, uh, on YouTube and just see like all of the bad stories that he puts out of people misusing steroids. I, I would hope that we would see less of that. I don't know if we would or not. I would hope so. As far as sports though, I think sports is an interesting one. Implying that it's legal doesn't apply, imply that it would be allowed within the rules of sports because, you know, there's a lot of questions. Is it legal all over the world? Um, did they decide that they're making it legal in sports? That's a big thing is like, you know, let's say it was legal to take them, but it was still illegal to use them in sports. Well, then we wouldn't see like a big increase in sports. We would see sports being one of the few places where maybe people wouldn't want to take them um, and people aspiring to be like Olympic athletes and stuff like that, not wanting to to, you know, take performance enhancing drugs, take steroids. Um, you know, I, I think there would be a lot of questions there. Like what, what leagues, what federations, what sports would allow it, which wouldn't, would any allow it? Um, 
we, we just don't know that. So I think that's like a big thing is like it, there'd be question marks, but I don't think it would increase in sports. Now, I think if they did make it legal in sports, I think that would be like kind of a neat thing. Like, uh, let's see, like if people just take as many steroids as possible, like how fast can humans really run? How high can they really jump? Like when like they could just like absolutely go off on like some of those performance enhancing drugs. But um I, I, I just can't see them making it legal in sports because it's so like tied into sports culture that it's supposed to be this like fair play. And that is seen as cheating, even though if everybody was able to do it, it technically wouldn't be cheating. So I don't know. That's, uh, that's my thoughts on if steroids were legal. Um, it is what it is. Um, so next question is from Luke Lambert. Uh, Luke, thank you for, you know, listening to the podcast. And again, I have chatted with Luke and, uh, you know, Luke reached out to me a little while ago, asking for some advice on bulking up, getting bigger. I was able to give him some advice. He's been, um, using that advice and he's been gaining some mass at some serious rates. So Luke, if you're listening, I'm super proud of you for doing that. Um, thank you for reaching out and keep going, keep going plus ultra. Um, as for your question here, uh, Luke says, I'm in need of some direction. I listen to your podcast every day. I have a fast metabolism. It's super hard for me to gain weight while still working out at the gym the way I do. What's good? What's a good diet or nutrition plan for gaining weight? Um, he said, I use creatine before the gym and drink serious mass mass gainer every day as well. So like I said, me and Luke chatted about this a little bit. Um, and uh, we and, and I was able to give him some advice, but I'm going to answer the question for anybody else that's listening to the podcast that maybe has the same question that I haven't had the chance to speak with one-on-one. -on -one. So first of all, a fast metabolism is kind of a weird thing. I don't want to say that it doesn't exist, but like I would consider myself having like a very fast metabolism. And I, I found that it didn't hold me. It wasn't the biggest thing holding me back from gaining weight. A fast metabolism means that your body probably naturally burns uh, more calories in a day. Um, it's probably maybe a little bit due to your basal metabolic rate, your resting like metabolic rate of how many calories your body burns at rest. I don't think there's actually as much variation in that as people think, but usually what it comes from is people that live very active lifestyles. So like for myself, I found that it was hardest for me to gain weight when I was a little bit more active on the gym floor, when I was working on the gym floor and I was averaging like 17,000 to 20,000 steps a day, I was getting so many steps plus workouts, plus always being on my feet, always talking to people, always being on the go. So having that really busy, really active schedule led to me burning a lot of calories and not really having a whole lot of time to eat. So, I mean, that's the ideal situation for anybody trying to lose weight. But, you know, if you're a smaller guy, if you're a skinnier guy, um, you know, like I, I, I still consider myself a skinnier guy, but I'll say like I used to be because I have bulked up a significant amount in the past few years. But if you're that skinnier guy and you want to gain muscle, that's not the ideal situation. So one of the first things you got to look at is like reducing your activity levels, which can be really hard. Like if your job requires you to be very active, you can't just be like, Hey, sorry guys. Like I, I just can't do anything. I'm just going to sit in the truck all day because, you know, trying to gain mass. Like that's just not how it works. But you know, if you can like outside of work, you know, try to spend a little bit more time watching Netflix. Um, you know, if, if you have a really active job, and you're struggling to gain weight, and you're also doing a lot of cardio or high intensity training, maybe bring that down a little bit and do a little bit more like heavier weights or higher repetition stuff, uh, like in the 10 to 12 rep range, but, you know, try to get rid of some of that, like hit circuit stuff, try to get rid of some of that, like, um, intensity cardio stuff the stuff that's going to burn a lot of calories and make it really hard for you to eat in a surplus. Cause that's what it all ends up coming down to is in order to gain weight, you need to consume more calories 
than you expend and then you burn in a day. So like I said, the first step is um, trying to reduce down the amount of calories you burn in the day, if possible. If not, it's not impossible to gain weight, but I'm going to tell you that it's going to be way, way freaking harder. Um, and that, that has been like a big part of my like success in gaining weight in the last like little bit here is like, I, I train a lot of clients on zoom. Now I do a lot of online coaching. So like my lifestyle is like a lot more cushy. Like I'll be lucky to get 5,000 steps in a day opposed to like the 17,000 to 20,000 that I was getting, um, when I was like actively on the gym floor for eight to 12 hours every single day. Um, you know, working like 60 to 80 hour weeks, sometimes a hundred hour weeks. And, and then I never had time to eat. Whereas like now, like working at home uh, a lot more of the time, I can just like pop upstairs, grab a meal in between clients, take some time to cook. I can be a lot more in control of my nutrition. Now, as far as getting in control of your nutrition, something that I found helped me a lot was tracking my macros and figuring out how much I actually needed to eat. Because some people are just so unaware of how much they actually need to eat that they think that they're eating a lot. They think that they're doing the right things to gain the surplus. And then they actually start tracking their calories. And what they thought was enough to gain weight was actually like, you know, 2000 calories a day. And they realize that they're probably burning 2000 or more calories a day. So they're like, oh, oh crap. Like, so then, you know, realizing that they start to increase their food intake and by increasing their food intake, they, you know, start consuming more calories than they expend and they start gaining weight. So that's, that's a big part of the components. That's usually what I tell people is like tracking and tracking isn't something that you have to do forever and not even something that you have to do at all. If you find that it's just like too stressful for you, it's too micromanaging. It just doesn't work for your lifestyle. There is other ways to get around that. But I do suggest even if it's only for a week, you should track your food because it's, it's knowledge, it's information. When you track your food, you get to see what your food like intake actually looks like. Like you could be really, really surprised at how off you thought you were with your food intake. Um, so number one for eating more track now, number two, eat foods you enjoy. So this is something I had told Luke when we were talking about this is like, um, he asked like, if there's specific foods that'll be better for gaining weight, I said the foods that you enjoy eating because uh, like a hard part about, um, like trying to lose weight is like you have to be hungry, right? Um, like you try to eat filling food so you're hungry for less periods of the time. But usually when you're trying to lose weight, you spend time being hungry. Well, trying to gain weight is kind of the opposite problems. You end up bloated, you end up full, and you end up not even wanting to like look at food. Like you're just like disgusted by the thought of food when you're trying to gain weight, um, especially when you're trying to gain a lot of weight or when you're trying to do it for long periods of time. So that's like a struggle that you go through. So if you're going to eat enough food to like ensure that you're gaining weight, you're not going to do it with foods that you hate. You're just not going to force feed yourself enough food to gain weight. Um, to it's just not going to happen. So you have to eat foods you enjoy. And a little bit of a story about that is um, once upon a time, I hired some bodybuilding coaches. Um, at the time, I thought I wanted to be a bodybuilder. Boy, boy, was I wrong about that. Um, and they, you know, they made me a meal plan. So I'm kind of against meal plans, if I'm being honest, because they, they very much like pigeonhole you into like foods you should eat. And there's just so much variety in what people like, and there's so many different ways to do it. That the, It's more about taking the foods you enjoy and finding a way to build it towards you what, what you want to do. So when it comes to like gaining weight, they're like, okay, we, I'm like, I, I need to gain some weight. I need to get bigger because I was really skinny at this time, right? So they give me this meal plan. It was 6,000 calories a day. 
which for anybody that knows, that's that's a ton of calories. But get this. So it was 6,000 calories a day of nothing but chicken, rice, and broccoli. So, uh, and, and six meals a day. Imagine eating six meals a day of chicken and rice and broccoli. I hated it so much that like, I was actually losing weight instead of gaining weight because I was so sick of food that the last thing I wanted to do was eat. So needless to say, that was not a meal plan that worked for me. I did not end up coaching with them for very long. Um, Respect them, respect what they do. The willpower it takes to do something like that is absolutely crazy, but uh, probably not long-term sustainable and probably not the best strategy in my opinion. Um, I would much rather see people eat foods that they enjoy. Now, the next component of this is I'm not saying eat like garbage all the freaking time because like that's 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 not a good way to do it. Like you need some micronutrients, you need some veggies in there, um, you need your proteins, but when it comes to your food selection, you want to pick foods that are less filling. So when you're trying to lose weight, you want to pick foods that are more filling. When you're trying to gain weight, you want to pick foods that are less filling. So what foods are less filling? Well, processed foods. So if you like eating donuts, like crush some donuts, like absolutely smash some donuts because you're going to be able to get your calories in. Um, As far as protein, you still need to be getting, I would say, at least 0.8 grams per pound of body weight of protein. So you still need to be eating some proteins, but because you're trying to get your calories higher, you now have a little bit better selection of proteins. Somebody that's trying to lose weight is going to want to pick like really lean proteins like chicken and fish and egg whites, um, because those proteins are going to be a high percentage of protein and a low percentage of fat which means that they are going to be more filling for the calories you get. You know, 200 calories of chicken is going to be more filling than 200 calories of pork because the say because the pork is going to be fattier. You're going to get less protein in that same 200 calories, more fat, that fat is less filling than the protein. So that's why when you're trying to lose weight, they say eat lean proteins. Now when you're trying to gain weight, I'm going to say try to eat more less lean proteins, try to eat more, you know, ground beef, try to eat more steak, try to eat more pork, you could still have, you know, chicken, um, you know, maybe eggs, but less egg whites, egg whites are probably still going to be fine. Like the lean proteins are still fine. Um, Just like when you're trying to lose weight, the less lean proteins are still fine. But when you're trying to gain weight, you can veer a little bit more towards the less lean proteins when you're trying to lose weight, veer a little bit more towards the lean proteins. Um, You know, Luke mentioned that he was taking mass gainer shakes. Liquid calories are going to be your best friend because they like barely fill you up at all typically. So, you know, juices, milk, stuff like that. Uh, You know, you probably hear about the people gaining weight doing like the four liter milk challenges where they drink like four liters of milk a day. Like, I I don't know if you need to go that extreme, but it's definitely a good way to get in calories to have like a glass or two of milk a day. Um, if you're trying to gain that weight now, um, as far as, um, the, the last part of it that I would say is long-term sustainability. So a big mistake I made when I was trying to gain weight growing up is I would try to eat like a ton of calories and try to gain like 15 pounds a month. Like I, I I had to be as big as soon as possible. And like, we see people do this with like weight loss all the time where they go like way too fast. They want to lose all the weight within like three months. They don't give themselves like a long-term sustainable period and they don't make any like habit changes to like sustain that. So even if they are successful, they usually end up putting all the weight back on, but more often than not, they end up quitting. Well, the same thing kind of held true with like gaining weight is like, instead of trying to do it slow and sustainably and maybe put on a half a pound to a pound per week, I was trying to put on like 
like three to five pounds a week and eating as much as humanly possible. First of all, less of that weight is going to come on as muscle. So that's a very inefficient way to do it unless your goal is literally to, to, to get fat, which I, I mean, some people, that is their goal. That That is something that they want to do for like powerlifting and stuff like that. Uh, maybe that's the body image they want. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, from a health standpoint, that's probably not the greatest way to go about things. And if you're a skinnier dude and you're trying to gain weight, it's probably okay to gain some body fat, but you're probably your primary goal isn't to gain body fat. It's probably to gain more muscle. So, you know, do it slow, do it sustainable, pick a 500 calorie surplus. Don't try to go for like a 1500 or a 2000 calorie surplus, like that many calories over what you're expending, you know, just pick a nice 500 calorie surplus, do that for eight to 10 weeks, you know, gain somewhere between five to eight pounds during that time. And then go into a maintenance period, bring your calories back to like whatever you maintain at, and then stay there for eight to 10 weeks and let your body kind of get used to being at that new weight and then repeat the cycle over and over again and slowly gain the weight. So when it comes to gaining weight, slower is better. Um, I think that's all I really have to say about gaining weight. But if you guys have more questions about gaining weight, feel free to fire them by my way and I'll address them whenever I have another Q&A. So next question here. Um, So again, from Luke. So Luke asks, Levi versus Kakashi. Uh, no Susano or Kamui and his normal one sharing gun. Who would win? Uh, well, Levi's pretty fast and pretty good with the ODM gear. Um, Kakashi's pretty fast as well. Kakashi uses like tons of different jutsu. He can go underground. He has the mud wall. He can summon the dogs. He has a super keen sense of smell. Um, as well as the Chidori, which is just crazy. Uh, so I would say, you know, even though I really like Levi, Levi is a great character. I just think that the way that the universes are set up, um, we see a little bit more OPness in uh, the Naruto universe. My my go is for Kakashi um, and his Sharingan. He'd be able to read his movements. He'd be able to smell him. He'd be able to copy his movements he would be able to um counter his movements he has the power of lightning and pretty much like all of the different chakra styles um and he has so many different like jutsu it's just insane um yeah my 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 goes for kakashi so uh uh one more question from luke here is what's your favorite fight in anime oh man my favorite fight in anime hmm i'm gonna go with bakugo and deku versus nine in the second my hero academia movie i'm hoping for a fight that tops that in this third movie coming out like geez we're probably like two weeks away now people get ready um i would say that's my my favorite anime fight um i also really enjoyed the all might in deku versus the main villain in the movies i think that's something that i don't want to say that the show does a bad job of having fights um i would just say that Compared to some other anime, that's maybe one of the anime's like weaker point is those like crazy, crazy fight scenes. It has crazy fight scenes, just not that like next level. But when it comes to the movies, I think we get a little bit more of that. When it comes to the My Hero Academia movies, I think they give us those crazy, crazy fight scenes. Um, In the first movie, we got that amazing end battle, and then they were able to follow that up with the Bakugo versus Deku versus Nine fight. Um, The music was beautiful, made me cry. The, like, animation was beautiful. Um, The, like, heart-filled, like, touching scene of, like, Deku giving his power away to Bakugo so that they could use the power at the same time. And having Bakugo's body just, like, 
overflowing with that power and, and like having it enhance his explosion quirk. So his explosions were just like unbelievably insane and having him feel the feelings of what it was like for like Deku to like handle this power and how it's like breaking his body and just the emotions, like the, the emotions were just so beautiful. It was so heart touching yet. So badass and amazing at the same time. I would say in anime, that is my all time favorite fight scene. Um, probably closely followed up by Naruto versus Sasuke at the end of Naruto and Might Guy versus Madara before that. So Naruto, probably two of my favorite fight scenes. I will say that in my opinion of what I like, I just liked the the scene of Deku and Bakugo versus uh, Nine, just a little bit more than those two, but still two amazing scenes in Naruto. Okay, so next question we have from Olivia here. If you guys have not seen Olivia's episode on the podcast, go back and listen to her uh, running with men- for mental health episode. We we talked about some amazing stuff on there. Actually, her, her question, I, I think I answered it on the podcast, but uh, I'll answer it again here because uh, I, I, I didn't really expand on it. So I'll take some time to expand on it. Uh, she asks, who's your favorite character? Uh, in jojo's bizarre adventures so my my favorite character in jojo's bizarre adventures is jotaro um jotaro is just so amazing i like his like quiet confidence i like that like it seems like he's this like big like snub that doesn't really care about anything but you come to realize that he cares very greatly about his friends and his comrades and really wants to protect them. Um, He's really smart. Seeing him like work through situations is just amazing. I I really, and then on top of that, I really enjoyed his character design, Um, the black jacket with the big gold ring, the hat and like star platinum was just absolutely awesome. And uh, the powers he unlocks near the end of, uh, the the first arc there the stardust crusaders arc is just crazy and then he carries that into the next arc which oh man it's uh, i it's i can't remember what the name of the next arc is i apologize guys um but the kind of murder mystery type arc uh for those of you know what i'm talking about um he maintains some of that like badassery and we get to see him um like use his powers still in a really good way. And he maintains a fairly main character role. I will say what I disliked about the next arc a little bit from the last arc is like, I really liked when Jotaro was the main character. So when he got kind of like pulled off and became a side character, um, not my favorite thing. Cause I was always like, I want more Jotaro. I want more Jotaro. But will I, what I will say is that, even though he was a side character, they did still do justice of like keeping him in the plot, giving him some good screen time. And you have all this like amazing attachment to him from the season before, I think with his grandfather, um, Jonathan or yeah, Jonathan, um, you, you see him in the second arc. Um, but to me, I just didn't get as attached to that character. So even when he was the old man, I didn't really care that he was more of a side character um, or maybe got like snubbed in his powers a little bit and kind of got pushed off to the side. But Jotaro, I, I, I didn't like that. Um, I, I could have kept Jotaro as my main protagonist forever. But I do understand that the point of the show is every arc, a new Jojo emerges. So, um, yeah. Jotaro, by far my favorite uh, JoJo character. Evan, my man. So Evan um, has been on the podcast before, like three times now. Uh, Shout out to Evan. Um, Evan is the co-owner, co-mod, whatever you want to call us. We are the the two founders 
of the Discord channel, the UA Academy, and we've kind of like been building this uh, community together. Again, if you're not part of the Discord uh, channel, jump in. Evan runs an amazing Twitch stream. If you haven't seen one of Evan's Twitches yet, um, definitely jump in and watch one of his Twitch streams. Um, Evan's a good friend of mine. I love Evan. Um, definitely check out his stuff and jump into the Discord channel so you're notified when Evan's jumping on Twitch and when the podcast comes out and interact in our community. We love having more friends. Um, you know, me, me, Eddie and Evan are always in there trying to chat with people as much as we possibly can. It's a really fun community. So yeah, again, the, the link is below here. Jump into the discord channel. Um, so Evan asks Deku versus Naruto, who would win Deku? Next question. Oh, okay. I guess I'll discuss this a little bit more. Uh, honestly, probably like Naruto. Um, like I, I, uh, I, I, these questions where like you're like asking about different universes is so hard. I think at least in like Naruto versus like My Hero Academia, they both have like powers in the different universes. Um, so maybe that's like a little bit of a thing, but like what, what Naruto are we talking about here? Like, are we talking about like kid first season Naruto or like, you know, like end of Naruto before Shippuden Naruto versus like the equal like Deku. If we're talking about that, then I think like Deku like whips his butt, like Naruto hasn't even like got his gears yet Deku's so fast like even though Deku hasn't mastered Black Whip yet like still having Black Whip and just his incredible speed his shoot style um I mean I guess Naruto has shadow clones at that point in time so he can multiply himself he's got the Rasengan maybe a closer fight but I don't know I, I like if you're like ah adult Naruto from Boruto or end of Shippuden Naruto versus Deku like well well Deku's probably getting spanked like <laughs> I, I'm sorry y'all like I, I love Deku he, he's up here on my wall I have this like beautiful photo from my man Dominic on my wall of Deku I, I love Deku like Deku is my main man but like <laughs> Uh, th that's just not even fair like naruto could turn into like gigantic kuruma mode naruto and, and just uh, shoot gigantic like death black balls at him like p poor deku like e even if he's got airy strapped on his back like a hundred percent i i still don't know if that man's <laughs> getting out of that like yeah, adult naruto older naruto's pretty op but i i think that we're gonna see a similar transformation from deku um of deku getting to be that level of op in his own universe and maybe that's a better time to discuss this question when when we have that information um but yeah if we were to say like it, comparable time frame in their anime um journeys naruto versus deku i think deku's progressing a lot faster than naruto did and i would say that deku uh could probably beat naruto but uh naruto started off his progression really really slow and then we saw in shippuden he just went off so um i i think you know Naruto is just a little bit of a slower learner than Deku. And that's why if it was comparable, you know, I, I think Deku would win, but we'll see. I mean, if Deku's progressing faster. Maybe he doesn't have as far to go as Naruto did. Like they say in the My Hero Academia, when Bakugo gets so frustrated that like, um, you know, Deku's catch you. It's like the further you have to go, you know, the more room there is for growth. So, you know, maybe because Deku's growing so fast, there won't be as much room for growth for him later. But uh, yeah, that's, that's my thought. That's my thought. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't even want to see 
uh, De- uh, Deku versus like her anime Deku versus adult Naruto though that you know <laughs> what's the uh, it'd be like Godzilla versus Bambi where you just see like Bambi chewing on some grass and just Godzilla's foot coming down and just squishing Bambi that that's that's how that fight would go um so <laughs> Gogeta Fitness um my man here um Yan in the Discord channel. Love you, bro. Um, also, fun fact, he's been one of my first followers. Um, you know, he puts out an awesome YouTube channel. We started chatting. And when I first started the podcast, uh, I, before I'd even put out an episode, I had ran by like, hey, how does my like intro video for this look? How does my like teaser video for this look to uh, my man Gogeta Fitness? And he, you know, he gave me some feedback with his like, um, you know, background in editing for YouTube and stuff like that. Man's been working on his lifts, trying to get stronger, putting stuff in the YouTube channel. Mad respect to you, bud. Um, this man's journey is amazing. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, I think it's Yandre Gogeta on YouTube. Um, jump into the Discord and ask him. Go at Yan and uh ask the man about his youtube channel uh he asks who's my favorite character in hajime no ipo so uh ipo <laughs> um yeah i i i like ipo um i, I i'm a sucker for the like underdog story of like the character who like i guess like starts from nothing and like just builds momentum and, and just keeps going and i i, I feel like people kind of go on one side of the fence or everybody's like somewhere in the middle um but like everybody has their preferences some people you know they like the sasuke they like the guy that starts off with a little bit more talent but has to go through like a little bit more i guess like personal growth and maybe it be their relationships with other people or battling the demons of their past um some people find that relatable i think we could all find some relatable qualities in those characters and then uh then you have your like main protagonist underdog prototype character that is just this like th- this dude that you know like has like like no power or very little power and trains super hard and grows and I don't know, like I was that skinny weeby kid that just always had to put in like all that effort to like trying to make my dreams happen, trying to make my goals happen, trying to build muscle, trying to get stronger, trying to be a football player, trying to, you know, make it to college football, trying to, you know, prove it that, you know, I belonged in college football, you know, trying to make it as a power lifter. Um, <sighs> try to make a podcast take off. Like I just... You know, I, I dream big and uh, I, I, you know, call, call it an underdog story, call it whatever you want, but I dream big and I try to make my goals happen. Um, you know, no, ha- no matter how unbelievable people th- think they are, I think Ipo falls into that category. Um, Naruto, Midoriya, uh, Asta from Black Clover, you got all these characters, but Ipo specifically, I just loved his like underdog story, his like growing up story, and he becomes like the Japanese champion. And it's just, it's just beautiful. It's, it's an awesome story. Um, I, I, I ate it up and I, I liked Ipo. Um, the other characters were cool, but Ipo's my man, just like Naruto's my man. That's, you know, no shade against Sasuke. I like Sasuke, but Naruto's my man. Uh, I, I like Deku. Bakugo is super cool. And like, even when I did my character analysis of Bakugo, there's a lot I liked about Bakugo. I think Bakugo is a really interesting, amazing character. Deku's my man. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't came to 
to be attached to you know as, as much as maybe some of the other side characters but you know's cool I, I like his magic i like his fairy i like his growth i like him as a character um asta's my man i, I don't know what to say there's a there's the character type I like. It, that's what I like. It, what I like is my underdogs. I, I, it, it just is. So, Ebo. Ebo is my answer. Uh, last question here um, from Dan or All Right in the Discord channel. Again, guys, jump into the Discord channel. I don't know how many times I have to tell you if you're not part of the Discord channel, jump into the Discord channel. Um, he asks, um, so he, he kind of keeps this on uh, the end of like another question. So he puts it in to ask about neck training, direct neck training as it relates to Zoro's three sword fighting style, um, which he follows up with a laughing emoji. So uh, me and Dan uh, talked about this a little bit in the channel. Um, so Jeff Napard put out some amazing videos on direct neck training um, in uh, for, for neck hypertrophy. So I think if you're, you know, if, Jeff does such a better job of uh, like explaining this to me. Go check out like Jeff, just type in Jeff Napard neck and like tons of neck videos will come up from Jeff Napard, but listen to him talk about it. But he talks about like how, if you want to build that like strong looking, like masculine physique, you, you look a lot bigger by growing your neck and growing your traps. So doing some direct neck training is like an instantaneous way to just like make your physique pop and just make you look like that much bigger. Um, so he talks about neck hypertrophy. And I, I think there's a good case. If that's your goal, if that's specifically what you want to do, um, I, I think that that's a great route to go doing some direct neck training to make that area look a little bit bigger. Um, as far as uh, general population, general health, general physique, general strength type goals go, um, probably not a ton of use in using direct neck training. I probably wouldn't suggest it for most people. Um, I think a lot of people's necks get really sore um, just from like sitting all day and getting like hunched over, like looking forward towards the computer and stuff like that. And your upper traps get all like shrugged from like working on the computer all day. So like people, people are sore in those areas as it is. They end up being like tight and having pain. And I can see direct neck training, um, probably adding to that pain and being really uncomfortable for some people. So if that was the case, I probably wouldn't suggest it. Maybe some direct neck training could like help make those muscles stronger so that, you know, they sit back in like their normal position longer. I, I don't know, but probably when it comes to training somebody for general health, I think there's probably higher priorities on their list than, you know, specific neck training and, uh, you know, I, I find that most general population people, uh, that are training for health have families, they have jobs, they have lives. They want to watch anime at night. They have a very specific amount of time that they have to work out, whether that be three hours a week, five hours a week, two hours a week. Like it's usually not much. And I think that the time that they do have can be much more efficiently used on compound movements. Um, with maybe a little bit of isolation and unless that was something where they're like yeah I, I want that nice neck it, direct neck training probably just isn't making it onto my list of things to give that person and if they do have any neck pain it's probably something I'm avoiding until they get strong enough that that neck pain goes away so I, I guess take that with a grain of salt however you want to look at it now as it refers to Zoro, I would just like to start off by saying, like, I, I've never watched uh, One Piece. So yeah, I know, shame on me. He, he, he can go on Instagram and message me mean things. I, I, sh I should watch it, but, like, I just can't do it. Yeah, guys, I, I, 
I, I watch a lot of anime, but a thousand episodes is pretty daunting, especially like I've tried a few times. And like, you know, if like I can piece away at this for like a couple months, I'll watch a couple episodes of One Piece a night uh, for a year, a year and a half, whatever it takes to finish up One Piece, like whatever, like I'll get it done. But oh man, like the old episodes were so painful for me they just can't hold my attention like i just i, I instantly just divert my attention to something else uh, wh when it's on I, i've tried like five times guys I, i've tried like five times i just i cannot do it uh, it's it, i i i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i can't i just i can't do it i i can't do it it's just i the animation's bad it, it's bad and because the animation's bad and the story's slow it loses my attention and i don't have that nostalgia factor like i watched like a, maybe a handful of episodes on toonami as a kid and i thought it was a pretty cool concept when i caught some episodes here and there but like i wasn't somebody that like religiously watched it all the time and so there's no nostalgia factor like like dragon ball z you could say the same thing like when you go back and watch like dragon ball z like right from the start you know you get like three scenes of gohan being in the first 10 episodes like why do you need to see go like tiny three-year-old gohan peeing three times in 10 episodes like how is that a necessary scene or like like zoom in shots of butterflies like it's just so slow. It's super slow. But with like Dragon Ball Z, there's nostalgia. I used to watch it as a kid. So you can like play on that nostalgia and like you know it's coming. So you get like hyped for it. But like I don't have that with One Piece. I don't know what's going to happen. So like I have to pay attention and I can't. It's so painful. I'm sorry, guys. Like just, I just cannot with One Piece. I want to like it. I think it's a really cool concept. I love pirates. Pirates are super cool. I love the Pirates of the Caribbean. Like the, the episodes I have watched, like Luffy's got crazy powers. Like it looks really cool. I want to like it. I'm, if you guys have like tips on a better way to watch it, where I could just like not watch the start of it, I guess. Like let me know. I, I've seen some like watch guides, like watch this and then watch this and then watch this. And you can like, like like fast track your way to like the good stuff kind of thing but you know if you guys have something like that send it to me and a uh, I'll, I'll use it I'll, I'll watch one piece if, if somebody has something like that takes the time to send me something like that but i haven't watched one piece but i have watched enough of one piece to know that zoro fights with a sword in his mouth and that's what dan's talking about here when he talks about the three sword style it's your putting a sword in your mouth and you're, you're swinging it around um i i would assume that that takes a lot of like neck strength maybe there's like some thing to you know having him train his neck a little bit as it might help him have a stronger neck for having like you know i i guess better swinging power <laughs> with his neck um i would say that i probably wouldn't do too much like direct upper trap work because as they get tighter and bigger it would reduce his range of motion which is probably pretty important to have a nice big like turning radius range of motion for like slicing with the sword in your neck um so any like neck strength work i would do would probably be rotational neck work i think pro it I, I honestly think that direct strength training would probably benefit him more this is a concept that i like firmly believe in is like specificity and like generalization so when it comes to training somebody they need a certain level of specificity and they need a certain level of general strength. So as a strength coach, your job is getting them that general strength. So you're going to focus on compound movements and progressively overloading them and getting them stronger, trying to make it like semi-functional for their sport. But 
I, I don't think that there's a whole lot of merit in like the crazy clown exercises of like, oh, we're trying to mimic what this football player would do on the field in the gym. Like, no, just have him stick to the basic compound movements, make it as basic as possible, get him strong as fuck. Like that's, that's how you train somebody. And then his sport specific skills. Do you know how he develops those? is by doing the sport, by spending more time playing the sport. Like if you want to be a better football player, you need better specific skills. Um, Then, uh, you know, play your sport more. I think the best way to get good at football is to play more football. So scrimmage more, uh, more. And then, you know, after that, the next most specific thing would be like, seven on sevens and then one on ones and like two on twos. And then also some like specific drills to work on some like specific weak points in your football game would help that as well. But I don't think that your work in the gym should be targeted towards that. I think it should be working on getting you generally strong and you should stick to the work on the field, getting you good at, uh, you know, being good at your sport. So I I think that's the best way to handle like sports conditioning for an athlete to a certain degree. Like you are, you are going to look at their like needs, like, but I just, you know, you, you just see the crazy exercises. You see the crazy exercises like geared at mimicking something that the person would do on the sport, but they're so crazy and extravagant that the possibility for progressively overloading them just isn't there. You just can't get stronger at those movements. So the more basic a movement is, the more you can get stronger at it. And then as somebody maybe starts to cap out those movements, maybe you start to diverge it to, um, you know, more specific movements, but like specifically for football, like a, a basic barbell back squat would be a great, strengthening exercise but a more specific strengthening exercise that still had a lot of overloading potential would be a single leg squat so specifically like a bulgarian split squat now if you do like a hatfield bulgarian split squat now you have a greater overloading potential so it's a single leg exercise that still involves that balance and still involves each leg working independently, each leg getting stronger independently of each other, which is a little bit more specific than a a regular back squat, but you have this amazing like overloading potential to it because of the way that you load it. Um, But, you know, like doing a jumping Bulgarian split squat with a bamboo shakeable bar on your back while somebody hits you with a foam pool noodle in the face. Like, like what's your overloading potential of that? Like it's not, you're just going to get the person hurt. A, 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 it's just not helping them at all. Anything on a BOSU ball, dumb. You can't overload that. You're going to fall off it. You're going to hurt yourself. Don't be dumb. Like don't squat, do a barbell back squat on a BOSU ball. Like BOSU ball has some like fun exercises you can do with them, some fun purposes, but doing dumbbell curls on a BOSU ball isn't going to make you a better athlete. That, that time could be better spent just doing regular dumbbell curls where you could get stronger, even though I don't, I don't know if I put dumbbell curls in any athletes program. I'm not sure how having bigger biceps would <laughs> benefit you anymore, but I would at least say that a regular bicep curl at least has more overloading potential. So it's probably better <laughs> than a bicep curl on a BOSU ball. Um, but probably better to do a heavier row. You're still going to hit your biceps. You're going to hit your back. You're going to build more overall muscle mass and more strength. That pulling strength will, you know, help you. Let's like, like if it's football or basketball, there's times where you're pulling people towards you wrestling times where you're pulling people towards you, holding on to them. You're mimicking that rotate motion. It's going to be more beneficial on the football field, but actually practicing those skills and really defining your skills you know, 
the best thing you could do is actually practice your sport for that. Now, in the case of Zorro, the reason I bring all this up is like, how much direct neck training would he need? I'm going to say not a lot. I'm going to say his time is going to be better spent on compound strengthening movements. And if he wants to get better at swinging his sword and he wants a stronger neck for swinging his sword, he should spend more time practicing his sword swinging. And that's going to operate as his direct neck training. So that's my little spiel on that. Um, I'm all out of questions for the day. Um, this was a nice long episode. Thank you, everybody that submitted questions. Um, anybody else that wants to submit questions, feel free to either fire me a message on Instagram or go into the Discord chat. Go to the podcast ideas tab and um, at Deku. I am Deku within the Discord channel um, at Deku. And then let me know your question. I'll save it. Um, yeah. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, I'm Max Hall Fitness on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, I've already said it. Join the Discord channel. And if you guys have not already taken the time to leave a rating on Spotify or iTunes, I would really appreciate you guys. If you're, if you're, if you're not driving or doing something where you can't, I'd really appreciate you taking the time to leave a review. It helps grow the podcast. It makes a tremendous difference. And if you guys are a viewer on YouTube, you have not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about my answers for today's questions. Let me know what your answers were for today's questions. And thank you guys. Peace out. I love you.